that control the land are always controlling you. And that's why the people in Lansing and the people here in Michigan and Detroit who are working with them are about to try to take self-determination away from our people right here in Detroit. Amen. You know, I want to open up by saying I want to really congratulate the Concerned Teachers United. They're doing a wonderful work here. Yes, they are. Paul is my uh, my Malcolm X historian. Right? 
Yes, he has. Just to come speak at our programs and make some films in our program. We might have to get on you to get some more of those films. <laughs> okay. And Brother Malik is in all these. Any other good people? Malik, in fact, when you first walked in, since I had so many of my family here, I got almost mistaken you for one of my family. <laughs> <laughs> we all relate. Uh, we all relate. We all relate. But look, I, this is a wonderful uh, coming together. Because we're coming together around a purpose, a very definite purpose. And the purpose is what that brings us here is the purpose which has kept us here for so many years. As we listen to the various different speakers talking about the problem that confronts Detroit today, I kept ringing in my mind and in my head the speech that Malcolm X made here. Uh, right before he died, a week before he died, the last time he spoke in Detroit and one of the last times that he spoke here, he said that one of the critical problems of the world was the problem of colonialism. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. yeah. He talked about colonialism. He didn't give one of those bombastic speeches like he normally does. But he was very analytical. He broke it down. And he talked about colonialism was the exercise of power. Yeah. Where well, wicked powers extended themselves and took over the power of nations and the power of people to govern themselves. That's yeah. what he said. Uh -huh. And he explained how that was happening all throughout Africa and yes. Asia yeah. and all throughout Latin America. Yeah. And he explained how the fundamental problem that we had was colonialism. And he pointed out that just like colonialism is your problem in Africa, brothers and sisters, colonialism is your problem right here in America. Amen. And so now we see full circle what Malcolm's talking about. Because it's the same disease. It's rich, greedy people who will use any kind of apparatus they can in order to subjugate poor people or weaker people in order to maintain their power and yes. their yes. We'll have the situation where this system has the audacity to talk about taking over the votes of the people in Detroit, Michigan. Yes. At the same time that they bomb and kill and brutalize people around the world That's allegedly right. because the leaders of those countries won't let those people vote. That's right. <laughs>
I mean, many of us, my, I saw my mother walk the streets. I saw her fight against discrimination. I saw her fight against the humiliation. So the election of Barack Obama, and I saw her crying and happy when Barack Obama was elected. Yes. I was happy when yes. Barack Obama was elected. Yes. Confessions of a revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> and you all were. I know you were. You've been the hardest of them. Oh, yes. The most nationalist of you were. Yes. Yes. Because it was the fulfillment of the civil rights movement. It was the quintessential victory of the civil rights movement. Yes. Yes. But you got to understand that there is a difference between the civil rights movement and the human rights movement. Uh, yes. Yes. There's a qualitative difference, and this is what Malcolm was trying to get us to understand. Yes. You will eventually exhaust where you can go with the civil rights exactly. movement. Yes. And when it is exhausted, it doesn't necessarily bring about the righteous change. Right. Right. But look, I also forgot to mention, let me go back. My oldest brother, Reggie, is not here, but his wife, Jackie, is here. Give one Jackie a round of applause. <laughs>
Colonialism was a complex of greed, mm -hmm. capitalism, imperialism, yes. the victimization of people worldwide. And you can't just sit back and watch people get victimized in Africa and say nothing about it. That's right. Because if you're going to sit back and watch them get victimized yesterday, then you will be victimized today. That's, that's right. 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 It's part of the, that's why I started off with what Malcolm said. It's part of the same problem. Same problem you got here, we got in Mississippi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, we got the same kind of city. Yeah. Detroit, Garrett, Jackson, Mississippi. Out of the three cities over 100,000, which are over 80% black. We are over 80% black in all those places. Yeah. And in every way they possibly can, in Gary, Indiana, and here, they're trying to take over those cities. Trying to take that away from us. They're trying to take it away from us in Jackson. But what we got to do is we got to stand strong. Yes. Like colonialism, the answer to colonialism is self-determination. That's yes. right. That's the answer to colonialism. And self-determination means that we got to do it ourselves. That's right. And when I say by ourselves, I'm not saying that we need that we don't need help of others. We do need help of others. Mm -hmm. Genuine people recognize an earnest self-determination struggle. Mm -hmm. So genuine people are here tonight. Yes. Genuine people will continue to be here. Uh, Anti-imperialistic whites. Right. Mm -hmm. Hispanics who are also victims of the same colonialism. Mm -hmm. All of them victims of the same monstrosity in various different ways. That's right. But the struggle for self-determination is, is absolutely and critically important. Mm -hmm. And so right now we're doing it by signing some petitions. But we've got to put this struggle in the head of our children. That's right. yes. we got to have a massive movement, That's like George says, right. and we got to have a massive re-education campaign. That's what yes. we yes. You know, somehow or another, the generation of our young have missed the message. Right. And they've missed the message because, essentially, we haven't been teaching them the message. Right. That's what the message is. So we complain about them shooting each other in the street, but they shoot each other in the street because they don't understand who the real enemy is. That's the problem. We got to work. We got to make them feel it. And when we get a little bit of success, we can't get so happy with that success that we forget who we are. That's our problem. A little bit of success. A little. When Coleman got elected, that was a little bit of success. And we got happy with that little bit of success. I, I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kids were pouring into the street, even complaining then. Over there in over on Livinois Avenue and things of that nature about the some of the kids getting shot down in the stores. I remember that. That's right. Yeah. And then what we had everybody going out in the street and said, well, Coleman's in office, now we're gonna cool the kids out. Yeah. It wasn't time to cool the kids out. No. It's time to heat the kids up, all right? right. Sure. We, you know, what we gotta do. Is we gotta let the kids know who the real enemy is. Yeah, that's right. The lowest, the lowest time for black on black crime was when we were all involved right. in this movement. We wasn't shooting each other. We wasn't killing each other. We wasn't harming each other. Mm -hmm. And so we gotta go back and teach those basic principles, the basic truth. And I said that this has to come to this. And and, 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 and we, we we talk about the no takeover in the school system. But even before that, there was Recorder's Court. You remember Recorder's Court? That's right. Recorder's Court. You remember Recorder's Court. Mm -hmm. That's when they told you that they wasn't going to have no more of you Negroes trying to run things. That's what they right. said. That's what they say. Now here at Recorder's Court, and I remember, I had practiced law all over the country. So I've been in Chicago. I've been in New York. I've been in all these places where they have these trials. Recorder's Court, at the time that they took it over, was the most efficient court system in the country. Black people were running the court system. Yeah, right. Now all of them, now, I'm not trying to create no, no false utopia here. I mean, it wasn't everything wasn't perfect at the court system. We had some knuckleheads. You always have knuckleheads, right? We had some people we were still struggling with, right? But they were people you put in office. And there were people that knew that you could take them out of office. That's what they knew. And so that's why they were able to work more in your interest at that time than they're working in your interest at this time. 
That's right. You can't even recognize the court's court today. Or That's right. Mm -hmm. Can't get a black on the jury. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's the lack of self-determination. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do, brothers and sisters, and I'm not going to speak a long time tonight. We need to get some questions and answers and talk back and forth to each other. But we have to have a new movement. Yes. And that new movement must understand, and, I, and I'm speaking to everybody now. This is not something that I'm missing on anybody. Africans must understand. Progressive whites must understand. Everybody must understand. Mm -hmm. A critical juncture in the struggle for power of this capitalism is the struggle for self-determination for African people who deserve it and who must have it in America. Right? Yes. Right. Yes. You cannot cure America's ill unless you go back to what the origin of those ills are. You can't just repaint the White House. You can't just claim that you're redoing the society. And you leave the biggest ill still in place. This place is no good. America has not gone wrong. America has never been right. Demonstrate. I remember we had a little bit of success and folks were talking about I ain't demonstrating no more. 
That's <laughs> <laughs> what they say. They, they were too sophisticated to demonstrate. Yeah. Sophisticated yeah. revolutionary who couldn't demonstrate no more. You know what I'm saying? That's what we were. I mean, y'all you, you know what Y'all heard it before. Yeah. yeah you can go to yeah. the right. and yeah. king and them because they demonstrate. And Malcolm used to talk bad about king too, all right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But Malcolm had enough sense in the end to bring it all together, right? Yes, he did. Right. Yes, he did. He brought it all together. And so king also brought it together. They all understood. And it's interesting that the thing the king was fighting against when he died is the thing that's flaring up before us right now. Mm -hmm. What was he dealing with? The poor people's campaign. Right. Yeah. He was talking about taking tents out to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Same thing he's occupied Wall Street people are doing today, putting tents out to places and trying to camp overnight. And so what we have to do is we got to be prepared to use whatever mechanisms we need to be successful. We just shouldn't do it ignorant. We need think tanks. We need study groups. We need each one of these organizations. We need to revive the organizations that they gone dead. We need them. We need to build new organizations. We need to build this organization we got here to concern teachers, United. But we need to build other organizations. We need to join some organizations. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one, I got one for you, all right? I'll always keep organization for you. Right? <laughs> Come join our Malcolm X grassroots movement. That's what you can do. Mm -hmm. You want to sign up? Give me your name before you leave, right? <laughs> There's other organizations, and then the organizations have to network. Yes. They have to come right. together. Work together. They have to begin to play it together. Right? right. Somebody said that they were fighting over this. It's silly to fight over leadership. There's so much that needs to be laid. You know what I'm saying? No one person can do it. No one group can do it. And so this is, I, I really feel it coming on, brothers and sisters. I think that it's generating here. It's generating in Mississippi. Everywhere I go, it's beginning to generate is that our people are beginning to stand up and up. Sometimes you have to get achieve certain things before you recognize that you need more, right? That's right. That's right. I think the election of Barack Obama was good because it, 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 it put you in a position that you've never been in before. Right. And you realize now that that's not enough, right? That's right. We were telling you it wasn't enough a long time ago, right? right. But that's okay. No problem, all right? No problem. But if the reality is, is that we need more. And That's we right. need to change. We need to change America. We need to fortify ourselves in these cities. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we maintain the vote. And you need to support what we're doing in the South. Let me tell you something about Mississippi. If you go down the western border of Mississippi, there are 18 counties. 17 of those counties are jet black, okay? Do you realize that Mississippi that in most of Mississippi, if you got a 30% black population, you, you got at least a 30% black population. Mm -hmm. But in some of those counties, you have a 60, a 50, a 80% uh, black population. And this is all down, in, especially down the western part of Mississippi. There's only one county, which is 47% black, all of them are the rest of them. Already in those counties, people are electing, like you did, black council people. Black. That's why they elected me. Why do you think I'm here? Okay. <laughs> you know, you, you can imagine me going to Mississippi and getting elected somewhere. <laughs> okay, but you know, we were the ones that went down to Mississippi in 1971. The Republican Baptist said, we're going to take over the whole state. Right? The truth of the matter is, we're still trying to take over the whole state. Right? But the reality is, is that if you go down those counties, they have black mayors, black supervisors, black sheriffs. And it's not just the city. It's all major portion of the state. We need more investment there. You need to build your businesses here and try to invest there. You need to build it so we'll have a region of the world we can exercise state power. Yeah. We have to exercise state power. That's right. yeah. That's and then right. we're not going to stop there, right? Okay. And we got to change the nature of the United States, period. We have to break down the imperialism, the monopoly capitalism, and we got to change the nature of society. So we have to be revolutionaries. All of us got to be revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. And all of us have to be like and Malcolm said, if you're a revolutionary, you're a nationalist. If you're a nationalist, right. you're a revolutionary. And when we say you're nationalist, that means that you respect the ability of your people to have self-determination. That's what it means. So I want to thank you for inviting me here tonight. And, um, and, and we got a good struggle for